This name, household of God, also denotes the intimacy that God has with the church. His love for the church. It, it shows him to be a husband to a bride and a father to children. That's what we see in this. Now, I have a wife, and she is beautiful. And I love her very much. And I have children, and I love them very, very much. You see, there were times my wife would go with me anywhere when we were missionaries in South America. I mean, she'd walk into danger, no problem. But there were times when I would go into certain military zones where I knew they're going to pull me off the bus, they're going to rough me up a little bit, they're going to push me around, they're going to try to show their authority. And when they do that to me, that's fine. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. That doesn't bother me a bit. But if one of them laid one finger upon my wife, well, that's quite another story, isn't it? Now, I want you to think about this, pastors. Think about this. There was a great king who loved his bride. Oh, he loved her. And he always dressed her in the simplest yet most elegant white linen. She needed no audacious colors on her face. She needed no wild hairdos. She was beautiful, simple, elegant, pure, godly, beautiful. And one day this king goes on a long journey and he calls you as a steward. He says, I'm going to entrust my bride to you. I'm going to be going. I've laid out for you in a book every rule I want you to maintain. I want nothing changed, nothing changed. Stuart, you be faithful to carry out this book. Well, the king goes, and he's been away a long, long time. And all of a sudden, the steward begins to realize that the people in the kingdom are, are no, they're losing interest in the king because they're losing interest in the bride. She's too simple, um, too prudish, rather boring. She's out of step with the times. And so this steward thinks in his mind, aha, I've got it figured out. He calls her in. He takes off her white, elegant, godly dress and dresses her in something far more attractive to carnal men, paints her face, and then parades her up and down the street, and by doing so, draws all the carnal, wicked men back into fellowship, supposedly, with the king. That's exactly what countless pastors in America are doing today. They have taken the simplicity of the bride of Christ, her magnificent beauty, her purity, her holiness, and they have tore it from her, and they dress her up and parade her in front of carnal men that they will be attracted to somehow come back to God. Let me tell you something. On the day of judgment, don't, don't worry about the atheist. Don't fear for the prostitute or the murderer. You want to fear for somebody on the day of judgment? You fear for a large number of evangelical pastors who have departed from the Word of God and are parading the church in a dress, a garb that God never intended her to wear. Many times I pray, Lord, increase your fear in me. Increase your fear in me. You should be afraid to touch my wife. Terribly afraid. Oh, but how much more afraid should you be to touch the bride of Christ and do anything with her that is not found in this book? 
we are to be like the faithful Haggai. Remember him? He was put over Esther. And what was his purpose? Was he to make her presentable to the nation? Was he to work with her and dress her and do all sorts of things with her that she might be pleasing to the people of the kingdom? Absolutely not. He had one task, make her pleasing to the king. 